All right, welcome back everybody. So it's been a little while since I produced a video and there's a reason for that. I wanted to slow down and take a couple minutes here and explain exactly what's going on before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video. First and foremost, I wanted to thank each and every one of you who's been clicking on my videos and watching me one way or another, whether it's to call me out or to agree with what I have to say, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to what the judge has to say. It has been a real treat seeing some of the returns on the videos, and I hope to reach even more of you with my unique take on this wonderful game that we all share called Magic the Gathering. Whether it's arena or tabletop, no matter the format, we want to reach everyone, whether you play Standard, or Modern, or Pioneer, or Commander. Vintage and Legacy, you're playing a different game of Magic. I am not balling like that, but hey, hats off to you guys. Appreciate what you do. With all that being said, again, a hearty, hearty thank you all. It really means a lot that you guys have been clicking on me. Now, next... I have seen and gone over my analytics, and it seems to me that whenever the judge is bitching about something, complaining, or bringing up a specific talking point is when people get involved with my videos. So I'm going to be doing that, and exclusively that from now on. You will not see any more ranked play in that specific sense. There won't be no more labeled videos. At ranked play, I will be playing ranked still. I'm still trying to get up there. We have moved on to a much more competitive deck. Unfortunately, I'll have to save the homebrews for the fun stuff. I will be working a variant of a mono black discard. You will be seeing it in future videos. I will also still be cracking packs on screen. However, I will not be making dedicated videos to it. It will be in the format like you're seeing here, where I will have cards in the background maybe i'll label them maybe i won't hard to say right now what i do know is that i will no longer be going specifically over the cards that come out of the packs because it seems to me that y'all just don't care which is fine i hey you know pack opening videos aren't for everyone and it's not exactly my forte what is my forte is pointing out some of the bullshit that happens with this game, specifically with Arena, but sometimes with Tabletop, you know, that's how it goes. Those are the attitudes around it, I guess I should say, and whether or not I'm going to be pointing out those attitudes. Now, that leads me into the subject of this specific video. Now that we've gotten through the inner, or the, oh man, oh man, oh man, that was terrible, El Terrible. Let's try again. Rewind. Now that we've gotten through the intro and the thanks to all of you for watching my videos, whether it's positive or negative, I appreciate y'all watching me. Y'all are some real ones. The meat and potatoes of this specific video. You gotta come over here. Let me grab the old mousey mouse so I can bring up a comment that was left on my net decks. Now, I did a breach around 710 of you, which is pretty good for my channel. I am small potatoes right now. I do hope to grow a bit larger than that, but you know, we gotta keep putting in the work. In the meantime, I had far more engagement with that net deck video than I did with any other video to date. A lot of folks seem to have an opinion one way or the other, and I'm not necessarily here to call out any one of you specifically for your viewpoint. The idea was to create a discourse. I did have some interesting replies. There was someone who said that the decks weren't the problem, that it was assholes, plain and simple. And I think that person might have been onto something. In fact, I think that might be the judge's problem too. Is there a correlation between assholes and high tier net decks? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Maybe something that will have to be addressed in a different video. 
or maybe in this video also. Hmm. It's an interesting thought to be sure. However, that is not the one that I wanted to address. I wanted to address a comment. I'm not going to say the commenter's name. If y'all want to, you can go into that video. What is the issue? Our net decks a problem is the video title. And you can find this comment for yourselves. I do not want anyone to give this person a hard time. Uh, to, I'm not looking for any ugliness here. I'm simply pointing out the viewpoint and responding to it. Uh, it was special enough to me that I felt it warranted a whole video of a response. And so that's what you're going to get is a whole video of a response. I will be reading this comment in its entirety, and then I will tell you all how I feel about it and what I think about that specific mentality. Because as you're about to hear, there was definitely an air of, shall we say, holier than thou, uh, mightier than thee. Uh, I look down on, down my nose at you plebeians type attitude. You know, there's folks that say you can't get the those sort of feelings from text. I wholeheartedly disagree. I very much got the feeling that this individual seems to think that they are better than. At least with the with the the comment that they made. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Hey, I'm just an asshole on the internet complaining about stuff. But nonetheless, you've gathered my attention, and so now I'm going to be complaining about your viewpoint. Again, I do not wish anybody to attack this person. I'm not trying to see a bunch of hateful nonsense in my comments section. If you do that, you're going to get your ass ejected pretty fucking quick. All right? Now, this channel admittedly is not a channel for young children. As always, there is a, an explicit lyrics content, if you like, right? Because we are not going to be shying away from strong language here. We're, me we're all adults here. This is a teen and adult sort of game. So let's get right to it. The comment said, and I quote, <clears throat> here's an idea. Play the game with people of your skill level, budget level. Here's another fun fact. No deck you made is your deck in air quotes, in quotations. You didn't think of this cool interaction. You didn't discover some wild strategy that no one else has found. If you were playing Magic Online against strangers or in a game store and not your friends, the design of the game is to win. Capital W-I-N. Win. Plain and simple. End quote. Well, let me tell you, yes. For some of this, for the latter half of this comment, I happen to agree with you, stranger. Yes, when you're playing in a game store, when you're playing against strangers, the, the idea is to win. I think you missed the point of the video. It's not so much about winning or losing, my friend. And in fact, there was another commenter, the one that I shouted out earlier, that seemed to hit the nail on the on the head, right? It The deck isn't the problem. It's usually the dickhead playing the deck that's the problem. That leaves a foul taste in your mouth. There was another commenter who I happen to agree with who also hit the nail on the head when they stated that the decks aren't necessarily the problem, but man does it sure get fucking boring when you keep seeing the same five or six decks over and over and over again, especially within a ranked or competitive format. Hey, guess what? That's not fun. It's not fun to play the same thing over and over. You know what the definition of insanity is, friends out there in the magic? I'll bet you do. I'm sure we've all heard it. It's a pretty common one. But let me run it by you again. The definition of insanity, according to Merriam-Webster, is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different fucking result. That's insanity. By definition. So by definition, playing the same five or six decks over and over in a game store not your friends, online, is insane. And I think a lot of us would agree that it shouldn't have to be. That there should be some more diversity. That in a game that has 30,000 cards, there shouldn't be narrowed down to six to eight deck archetypes at any given time within standard. That's, that's crazy shit, right? 
But regardless, that's what the state of the game is. And if you want to play it in the store competitively at all, that's what you can expect. All right, that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Now, with that being said, great. I can still agree to a certain point with you, friend. No, when you're playing again in store, the the design of the game is to win. Yes, especially in a competitive format. But the interesting part of this comment for me, and the one that I wanted to pick apart, was the first part of it. Play the game with people of your skill level backslash budget level. And that sort of got the gears in my head turning. Turning enough that I did, decided I needed to take a few days to think this over before I decided to bring it to everyone's attention. You'll have to forgive the judge here. I am choking fire back in my throat because I drink too much coffee. The price of being an adult, I'm telling you. All right. Play the game with people of your skill level, budget level. Interesting. An interesting thought. Skill level. I have a little bone to pick with that specific. Phrase. Statement. Friend, if you are playing a net deck, right? Because as you yourself said, no deck is your deck. You're playing someone else's deck. You didn't think of the cool interaction, nor did you discover some wild strategy that no one else has found. Where's the skill? If you're playing a deck that's known is in the competitive scene, what skill are you referring to? I mean, there is a certain amount of skill in knowing when to play a specific card, sure. But a lot of people, I think, would argue that the skill is in the deck construction. That's where the skill is. Not in playing the deck. How could you be too skillful at playing someone else's deck outside of knowing how to play the deck, how the deck works, how to pilot it, as some people say? What the fuck are you talking about, man? Skill level. That that doesn't... It's my opinion that doesn't mean anything at all. There is no skill to be had per se. You're going to have good matchups, and you're going to have bad matchups. Especially when you're playing with a net deck. Right? Like you said, it's not your deck. You didn't think of the interaction. Not your wild strategy that no one else has found. It's a net deck. So there's, there's not really much skill there involved. Right? Can, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm crazy on that. And I'm sure there will be people that will get a hold of this video. Everyone's going to have a comment. Y'all keep it civil. Or like I told you, you can take yourself straight to the door. Because I'm not going to tolerate that sort of nonsense in here. Well, adults, I expect you all to act like adults. Right? Or uh, you can get to kicking rocks. With that being said, no, I don't. I don't see what skill level there is, especially when you're when you're running a a pre-constructed net deck. Okay, but the interesting part for me was the budget level. Now that I think is something that is worth discussing for just a few moments here. A budget level. Now it is a pay-to-play game, friends. Let's not mince words. Let's not. Chop it up different. This is definitely a pay-to-play game. You have to buy the cards, and if you want to play in the stores, you want to play in the in the regionals, you want to play national, you want to play international, you're going to have to put money into the deck. No two ways about it. Plain and simple. That's the truth. You can like it. You can lump it. Doesn't, doesn't fucking matter. Right? That's That's the truth. There are budget levels. And, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the more money you're able to throw at this game, the higher tier deck you are you can run. Right? It's simply a matter of, of what is. The more money you throw, the better cards you can get. The more of those cards you can get, up to the four of, especially if you're playing in modern and standard, you know, this isn't really a, a strange concept to anybody who's even passingly familiar with the game. That there is a budget level. And the older the cards get, the higher the budget level. Right? I mean, even right now in 
in standard i think that the what the the some of the tier one tier two decks are between 600 and a thousand dollars if you wanted to get all of the cards that you would need like from scratch no 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 you don't have anything i just want to buy it out right you're talking about six hundred dollars right but that puts you in the tier one playing someone else's strategy playing someone else's deck right yeah that that's so it was an interesting comment right should magic be divided into tier levels based on budget is what got my wheels turning about this specific comment. It was the motivator for this entire video. It was the, the idea that maybe this game should be split into tiers based on budget level, right? Not necessarily what deck archetype you're winning, because for the most part, they sort themselves out based on the 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 budget level of the deck. And there, it seems, is a direct correlation between how much a deck costs and where it lands in these tiers, right? Go and look it up for yourself and, and see if I'm lying about it, right? The number one deck, I'm willing to bet, is going to be the most expensive deck to run, period, right? In fact, let's, let's take, let's give it a minute here. Uh, Magic... The Gathering Standard Meta. Yes, okay, let's click on that. And let's check it out. Okay, so we are looking at Four Color Legends. Looks like it is in the top tier here, right? 8% of the meta, $588, right? 18 0.3% of the meta right now is Esper Midrange with Rafine Scheming Seer. Guess how much that shit is? $480, right? The next deck down, Domain. Leyline Binding, Topiary Stomper, Angel of Wrath. Oh, I just played against this deck earlier, right? Is uh, $504, right? The top two decks, you're looking at about $500 bucks right now. The next two in line, 250, 200, Teamer Land combo, right? Uh, and Boros Convoke. But yeah, you you want to you want to play in the top two, right? You're spending 500 bucks, plain and simple, right? Now is that is that a, a coincidence? No, I don't think so, right? The more money you play into it or pay into it, rather, the the higher tier you get to play. That's it. That's it. So should we split the game into budget tiers? Right? What do y'all think? Do you think that might make the game a little bit more fair? Do you think that that would chop up or mix up the the meta? Right? Like, hey, you want to let these whales who can spend that sort of money play in a tier of their own? Right? For a tournament and a championship of their own? And then break it down into like a, you know, a five, a, a 400 and... 400 plus tier, you know, a two, two to 400 tier, a 50 to 200 tier, right? You know, something like that, right? Split the, split the decks up based on how much they cost and then make them their own separate tournaments, right? Because even in, in like Pioneer and, uh, uh, what's the one, um, Popper and stuff like that, there's still going to be, you know, uh, deck lists and costs associated with those deck lists. Maybe we should split that stuff up. I bet that would cause some diversity in the decks that you see too. It would create a whole new tier of playing, right? Now, it's not like anyone would be better than anyone else. That's not what I'm saying here at all, outside of how much money you can throw at a deck. But it doesn't seem very fair to me that the top two uh, in the whole entire standard meta are the two that cost the most money. Therefore, if you want to win, you spend the most money, right? That's that uh, pay pay to win, I th right? Pay to win, pay to win. Uh, yeah, you I got a hard time believing anything different, right? And I challenge you, friends, to to convince me otherwise that it's not pay to win. Maybe that's what we should do, right? It was a it was a thought that I'd had, right? Maybe we should start pushing this on wizards. Right? Do you all agree with me? Do you think that 
maybe what we should do is split up the standard and the modern pioneer into budget tiers, right? No longer is it just one all-inclusive, right? Where we all basically get punished by the people who can spend the most money. And we and we break these up into the the tiers with the where you know folks with more expensive decks play amongst themselves and they 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 can't come down to that tier the the lower tiers right the lower budget tiers it it's definitely an idea worth discussing and exploring i think uh i seem to i seem to have come to the conclusion that i think it would help actually i think splitting these into budget tiers you would see a diversity in decks right certainly like in uh uh, hacker rooms, right, where the hackers go and play amongst themselves, the high budget tier people can go and play amongst themselves, and they can rattle it out, and and do mirror matches and stuff like that, and we might see some diversity flourishing in the lower deck tiers, right? Because suddenly we'd be free, we wouldn't have to worry about playing against the, you know, the top two or three decks, and having to sideboard in to specifically shut down those decks, right? I think that could work. I really do. You know, at at the least, it's some food for thought, right? Is do you think that we should? Do you think that maybe we should split them up, right, or not? Maybe give your reasons for why you think we shouldn't split it up into budget tiers. Why it's fine the way it is? I don't know. It's meant to open up a discussion, quite frankly, right? I'm not singling out any specific person right we all have different statuses in life we all can afford to do different things and if we're all playing magic we all understand that we're spending money at some point or another but i don't think however that how much money you can spend on this game should dictate the, the your performance level if you want to go to like an F M or a regionals or something like that i don't think that you should be required if you want to perform at the top levels to buy into meta decks, right? Like you, like we discussed earlier, the the top one or two, you know, costing five hundred bucks, right? Not everyone has five hundred bucks to shit away in a card game. Hmm. Anyway, I think that's about out of time for today. Leave your comments and your thoughts below. They're always appreciated and always welcome. This has been some food for thought, and this is the judge saying. Stay out of the cubes, don't do anything I wouldn't do. We're done here. <laughs>